in the last stream we were working on setting up this automation over here to allow us to automatically produce these hellish technium ingots the second or third to final technium ingots that we need to make there's one more quest line for voided technium and then the final quest line here does have a quest that wants us to hand in 16 final technium and so i guess technically there are two more tiers of technium to go and my plan initially was going to be to work through the essence quest line and then move straight on to the void tech quest line but i think we might have to take a little bit of a step back here and actually invest in either an applied energistics 2 or a refined storage system i think i mentioned it a few episodes back but my plan was going to be to just kind of skip over them entirely because I didn't think we needed them. However, it has since been pointed out to me that I was misreading this final quest. I was under the impression that we needed to make one of each of these books to complete this quest. That is not the case. To complete this quest here, we have to hand in 16 final technium ingots. And each recipe here makes one final technium ingot and so we need to do each one of these books 16 times which is going to be a lot of crafting if we decide to try and do it manually it is possible we could make it happen we also have to craft 16 of these resonant angel rings which means 16 of these reinforced angel rings which means 16 of these hardened angel rings leadstone angel rings regular angel rings it is a lot of crafting to do manually and looking at some of these books for example right here we need to make 16 of the mod mastery thermal books which means making 16 lots of six resonant integral components so 96 of these just to get the mod mastery thermal book and we also have to do a bunch of crafting for all of the other books as well and so i think it is going to be a sensible idea for us to look at getting some auto crafting up and running to make it a little easier for us to craft some of the stuff required to complete this final technium quest line it's also going to help us in other areas as well because I would like to look at upgrading the speed of our ore processing setup. To do that, I'd like to upgrade from these reinforced integral components up to the resonant integral components. I'd like to do that for every single machine and I'd also like to get a lot more of these flux linkage amplifiers to make them faster as well. And given that we need the resonant integral components both to make our machines faster and to also make the mod mastery thermal book, I feel like we might as well teach a digital storage system how to do that and then just request that the system make them for us instead of trying to do it manually. And so we did unlock a little while back the ability to purchase either applied energistics or refined storage. And I did unlock applied energistics and I am going to go ahead and set up an applied energistics to system. Refined storage is definitely the easier way to go. And a lot of people are gonna go that way, which is fine. But I feel like a lot of mod packs usually have refined storage in them and I've played with refined storage to death. And so usually whenever I get the opportunity to play with Applied Energistics 2, I take it. And so in order to get a very basic Applied Energistics 2 system up and running, we're going to need a couple of things. The first thing that we're going to have to do is buy this mysterious cube, which thankfully only costs eight tech books, which we do have, boom and boom. This guy we can put down and we can break and in doing so, we get all of the inscriber presses that we need to make some of the circuits from Applied Energistics. So the inscriber is one of the first machines we're going to need. This requires two sticky pistons, which might be doable. Yes, we can make slime balls using vines, and we should have some vines in the system from a jungle tree that we cut down many episodes ago now. With those, we can make our sticky pistons, and of course, that gets us the inscriber which can then be used to make the circuits from Applied Energistics, those being the printed logic circuit, the printed engineering circuit, and the printed calculation circuit. Each one of these is made inside the inscriber with gold, diamonds, and certus quartz. The certus quartz here is interesting. It looks like we can just craft nether quartz directly into certus quartz crystals in this pack. That is tremendously useful. Right now we've got 66,000 nether quartz and so getting a couple of stacks of Certus Quartz crystals is not going to be a problem whatsoever. We can also grab a bunch of gold. We're actually fully out of gold. That probably shouldn't be too surprising because I assume that all of our gold has been turned into netherite. Over here we didn't put a storage downgrade on the netherite drawer and the netherite drawer is still a ways away from being full. And so 
we need a lot more gold than what we currently have. Where is our gold production? It is over here. The first thing we can do is we can look at uh, swapping out those blocks of redstone for blocks of netherite. Those are going to make the production of gold ore substantially faster. And then after that, we might even need to look at setting up multiple gold or miners depending on just how fast we uh, we end up eating through the gold in the uh, in the production of netherite but let's do one two three and four those should be coming in a lot faster now they are indeed and then over here we should have a bunch of gold ore in the chest the chest is backing up a little bit and of course we can kind of push these to the front of the queue but i think what we probably want to do temporarily is just turn off the induction smelter here or we could turn off the exporting of gold i think we'll do the latter i'm going to take this out temporarily so that any gold we do make is sent around to the system just because without gold we're not going to be able to progress with applied energistics 2 at all thankfully diamond wise we've got 74,000 diamonds also not a problem and so now using our inscriber here we should be able to make a fair amount of each of these circuits the inscriber does require power for now it's probably going to be easiest if we just whack it down right about here and then if we put in for example the logic press and the gold that should start making logic circuits and it does nice so we can make this faster i believe there are speed upgrades that we can put in here to make this i think they're called acceleration cards actually that allow us to make this faster now to get acceleration cards we need advanced cards which require calculation processes those are the ones with the certus quartz as well as fluix crystals so let me quickly go ahead then, I guess, and throw in the calculation press and the Certus Quartz crystals. We should be able to use our time in a bottle here to make this. Oh, we can't use our time in a bottle. That is unfortunate. The other thing that is unfortunate is the fact that you cannot put a stack of items into the inscriber at once. You can only put one item at a time in, which is not ideal. One good thing, though, is that we can just put a hopper directly on top of the inscriber here, and that should continually feed one Certus Quartz Crystal at a time into the inscriber. Now, the inscriber kind of works like a furnace here, where the top slot can be inputted from the top, but the middle slot, which is where we're trying to insert, has to be inserted from the side, like this. Perfect. So that's going to slowly but surely make these printed calculation circuits. Now, the circuits themselves are not the final product what we're trying to make is processors and so the logic processor the calculation processor and the engineering processor are what we're really after these are the core of basically every craft in applied energistics and so in order to turn a printed engineering circuit into an engineering processor we have to combine the engineering circuit with redstone and printed silicon printed silicon is made with regular silicon and the inscriber press and in this pack we can smelt nether quartz into silicon now we don't currently have we've got an energized smelter which i guess could work the jumbo furnace would have been faster i guess but we don't have a jumbo furnace set up and given that we do have the time in a bottle uh, we can probably do something like this and like this to very quickly get a large amount of silicon. And given that the uh, inscriber here is already not particularly fast, we can probably just swap out the calculation press for the silicon press and then drop in basically all of the silicon like that. And that should slowly but surely produce some of the uh, pressed silicon for us. Ideally here, to make this as fast as possible, we're going to want to get three acceleration cards, which means we need uh, just two calculation processes. So as soon as we have two of those... I'm going to take the silicon out and instead we'll put in the printed circuit, the redstone. What did that say there? It said can't insert or can insert from left, right, back and front. Do I have to put the silicon in first, then the redstone? I guess I do. I didn't know that there was a, a specific order to, uh, to putting those in. Either way, once these are complete, we should then be able to look at making these acceleration cards to make this inscriber faster on its own. The only thing we're missing here now is fluix crystals these are made by dropping charged certus quartz redstone and nether quartz into water so water wise we can uh, of course just grab a regular old minecraft bucket and we can uh, tap into our good old friend the aqueous accumulator over here boom and then back over here i'm going to temporarily throw down just like a little pool of water with some more of our brick bordered smooth stone here if we go one two three four we can drop the water down, and then right now we don't have any charged Certus Quartz. We can get charged Certus Quartz, though, by charging regular Certus Quartz in, you guessed it, a charger. So the charger 
shouldn't be too difficult to make. It's incredibly easy. It's six iron with two copper. Again, does require power. We'll put it down right about here. And then all you have to do is put in the Sutter's Quartz, like so, and it will charge into Charge Sutter's Quartz. Now, there is an element of randomness to this. It doesn't uh, take like a set period of time. You'll see that one took a little while. Sometimes they turn almost instantly, and sometimes they do take a little longer. The good news here is that we um, we should be able to automate this fairly easily if we uh, if we need a lot of charged Surtis Quartz. For now, though, we've got the Redstone, we've got the charged Surtis Quartz. The only thing left that we need in order to get the Flux Crystal is Nether Quartz. And as we saw before, we've got a ton of this stuff. And so back over here, if we drop in charged Surtis Quartz, Redstone, and Nether Quartz, preferably without picking it up, we should see some of that stuff transform, there we go, into Flux Crystals. Nice. And from there, we should now finally be able to make four of these advanced cards. And then from there, we should be able to upgrade those advanced cards to acceleration cards with the Fluix Crystals. We want three of those. And then over here, we can put all three of them in, like so. And now, if we wanted to make, let's say, uh, some more engineering circuits, these are the uh, diamond ones, we can put the diamonds in, and of course, in the hopper, and they're going to go substantially faster than they did before. They're still not super fast, and it still seems like it's taking the um, the rapid hopper like a little while to put the item in. It could be potentially a little faster if we got another laser IO node and potentially use that instead, because you can speed this up to, uh, to transfer one item per tick. So the rapid hopper is fast, but it looks like it takes a little while to kind of figure out that it's ready to transfer. Whereas if we were to drop a chest down here, drop all of the diamonds in like that. And then if we can get two item cards, which we may or may not have the signal to make, we totally do, fantastic. Along with at least four card overclockers, we should then be able to set one of these to extract. Make sure this is set to extract one item every one tick. We'll then put that in here. We'll put the insert card in here and we'll see if that's faster. It might be a tiny bit faster, it still seems like the limit might just be how fast you can insert into the inscriber, which is not ideal. Sometimes mods add advanced inscribers that allow you to um, to make these a lot faster. Unfortunately, it does not look like we have that mod installed in the pack, and so we are going to have to deal with the regular old inscriber for the time being. And so, yeah, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and maybe make like a stack of each processor here. So we'll just do a lot of silicon pressing. We'll do a lot of calculation, logic, and engineering pressing. And then we'll press all of those into processes. And then from there, we should be able to uh, hopefully set up the uh, the basics of a Applied Energistics 2 system. Okay, so I made some more inscribers. We've not quite got all of the presses just yet. We are getting there, though. We've got quite a lot of uh, printed logic circuits, and we've got uh, some printed silicon as well. But it turns out we can actually do this in a much more sophisticated way if we use laser IO. Specifically, we can probably automate kind of all of this with the laser node if we have five inscribers. So I've uh, quickly grabbed some more jungle samplings here. The idea is that if we do something like this and we do a quick grow, it should have a bunch of vines on it. The vines are required to make more slime balls because we're officially out of vines at this point. And we do need more slime balls if we are going to make more inscribers. And I want to get two more inscribers specifically here. So the plan is going to be that we do something like this. We get some more slime balls. We use those slime balls to make more inscribers. Helps if you can spell. Once we have the uh, the extra two inscribers, we should then be able to throw these down here and here. Can I rotate this to face the other way? I can I can? I can. Okay, cool. So these are all facing forward now, which I think is, is useful to know. So the idea here that we're going to try and take advantage of, and I think I might not be able to access the node actually, so I might have to move this front inscriber and do it at the end. But I think that the idea that we can uh, kind of tap into here is that one cool thing you can do with the laser node when inserting is you can specify which side of the machine you want to insert from, which is very powerful because it means that right now, even though this laser node is only touching the left side of this machine, this machine can only insert, for example, the silicon press from the top, right? But if we open up our insert card and change this from default to up, that is going to insert into the inscriber as if it were on top of it. And so now if I put the insert card on this side and I put the extract card on the downside and I put that same silicon press in like that, 
it is going to place it into the bottom, which I think means I need to change this from up to, to down, like that. Let me try that again. So I compress down. Perfect. Okay, so down is the top and up is the, the bottom. But now that placed it into the correct slot, despite not facing that slot. And so the idea here now is that we can, uh, we don't need to do it obviously with the presses. We're going to put the calculation press, the engineering press, the logic press, and the silicon press all in, right? So those are all going to go in by default. We then want to get a bunch more item cards. Let's go with at least a few more here. We do need more chests. Again, chests, thankfully, super easy for us to make, he says, as again, he uses the wrong kind of wood for that. Are we completely out of oak wood? That... Seems surprising, but I do notice we've got 66,000 oak planks. I feel like I might have made a mistake at some point, and maybe I've, like, um... Did I put a void upgrade onto my plank drawer? I did. Let me take that out. <laughs> that void upgrade there is uh, deleting all of our logs, just turning them all into planks and deleting them, which is not uh, what we wanted. Anyway, we've got enough chests. We can definitely make some more item cards, and those item cards, which are going to be easier to use inside of my card holder, there we go, are going to allow us to insert into these different machines. And for each of these, we just want to insert from, let's say, the left-hand side, which in this scenario is the south side, so facing south. So we want all of these to insert as if the node were on the south side. So let's just right-click here. Let's change this to south. And then all we should have to do is in the up section, we're going to put one of these cards. In the south section, we're going to put one of these cards. In the north section, we're going to swap out the card for a new one. And then in the west section, we're going to put one in as well. So there should now be an insert card on every side going into these inscribers. And right now, those are all set to go in on the south side. Now, I don't actually know if I can put the wrong items in. So if I try and put a diamond in here, it just doesn't go in. And so in theory, if I put a diamond in here, or, or certus quartz, the uh, certus quartz should have gone to the right place. It did. However, it puts certus quartz in everywhere else as well, which is obviously not what we want. I was hoping that the inscriber would know which press it had and wouldn't allow the wrong item in. Unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be the case, but that is fine, of course, because we can use filters to specify where we want each of the items to go. And so let's quickly make a basic filter. And then on the south side here, we just want to specify that we actually do want the quartz crystal to go there. So on the south side, we're going to open this up, we're going to put in a filter, and we're going to filter for the crystals. And then the top side, so up is the engineering press. That is where we want the diamonds to go. So in here, we're going to throw in the filter and we're going to say filter for diamond. So now if I take this out, it's the diamond that went in and not the certus quartz. If I take it out again, the certus quartz this time doesn't go anywhere, but the diamonds do go up, which is perfect. And then on this side, which is the north side, we are going to filter for gold ingots, which we currently don't have in our inventory, but we are now starting to back up on in the system. We've got a thousand of them already, which is fantastic and a testament to how good our ore processing system is working boom and boom let's put you in and make sure you go to the right place fantastic and then finally we have the west side which is going to take the silicon nice and so now if we put any of the items in to here they should go to their correct place so the next thing we need to do is we need to get power into these inscribers for that we could just put a flux point on the front here, but I do want to put another inscriber on the front. And so instead, I'm going to put another node down. Let's say right about here. And then I'm fairly certain that we should be able to grab our laser wrench, connect this node to this node. And I think if we put the flux point directly here and we grab a couple of energy cards, we should be able to pull the power from that flux node and then transport it to all of the inscribers. So here on the downside, we're going to put in an energy card. We're going to set that to extract. That's going to pull a thousand redstone flux per tick from here, which is going to pull from lappy power. Then over here, we just need to put in insert cards into all of the faces that currently have insert item cards. Like so. And so now you'll see that all of these are working. Cool. And they're all producing the circuits. Of course, going forward, we are going to make more of these acceleration cards to make all of these nice and fast, but for the time being, this is now working and these are being made. The next stage of the process is to then create extraction cards that extract from the right-hand side, because if we hover over uh, this while it's empty, it says can extract from the left, right, back, and front. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go in here, we need to change these to extract, and we need to say extract from this side, which I believe is the north side. Yeah, so we're going to extract from the north. And so now, if I put that in up here, that should, in theory, extract from there 
And we want it to insert into the down section. So the down section is just going to get a regular insert card. And we're just going to set that to default because it doesn't matter where that inserts. But you'll see that's now pulling the printed engineering circuits. Pretty cool stuff. We can then, of course, do the same thing on all the other sides. So on the north side, extract. On the south side, extract. And on the west side, extract. And so now we've kind of automated the production of these circuits because now all we need to do is put in either gold, diamond, uh, silicon, or Certus Quartz into this chest and it will automatically send it to the right place, turn it into the right circuit, and then pull that circuit back down into the chest. And so then the final piece of the puzzle is kind of turning those circuits into processors. And so all we need to do now, oh yeah, no, silicon is not being made. Is that uh, a power issue? Did I not insert power onto the west side? I did insert power to the west side. The priority is zero. I don't think that matters too much. I'm not quite sure why that's not working. I feel like it should be. But either way, we'll come back to that in just a second. If I take this inscriber, this inscriber is going to go on the front. And the idea here is that we're going to export the printed circuits of all three kinds to the top slot. We're going to export redstone to the middle, and we're going to export printed silicon, which we should have, uh, to the bottom. And so all we need to do here is, I think we need to get three more item cards, and we need to have them all set to insert, but we need to have them set to insert differently. So let me grab these out. I'll take one, two, three. And I think we're going to need more filters as well to make this happen. Let me quickly grab another batch of these. And the idea here is that we're going to say all of you should be insert. but each one's gonna play a different role. So one of them is going to insert the printed silicon, and that is going to insert the printed silicon to the bottom, so we want to set it to up, like that. Then we want one to insert either of these three. So one, two, three, those are all gonna go into the top. So here we're gonna set that to down, which we'll insert to the top, put in the filter, and then put in each one of these. And then finally, the last one is going to insert a redstone into the center. So in that case, we want it set again to the south side, like so, and you're going to insert redstone. Nice. So if we put all three of these into this front slot, ideally, as soon as we put in the final inscriber, not in there, but on here, it should take one of the circuits and put them in. It's put the circuit into the bottom. If I mess this up again with the up and down sides, let me quickly check the cards that we have. So you're inserting to the south. That's, I think, correct. You're inserting down, which I thought would insert from the top, but maybe we need to insert to the up. Also, I don't think it matters, actually. I think you can insert to either the top or bottom with these. Um, I'm pretty sure that silicon can go up there. It totally can. Uh, let me just quickly check that that does actually go to where it's supposed to go. It does indeed. And if I put redstone in, that also should go to where it's supposed to go. And then, of course, the final thing we need to do is we need to give this power and we need to put in an extract card. So power-wise, we just need yet another energy card set to insert and placed right about here. We then need to get ourselves another item card, which we may or may not have. We do. Set it to extract, which this one is already set to. And then extracting from the north is correct. So let's put you into here. And I think that should be good to go. Um, real quick, we are having a problem with that west card. Let me try changing the face of the power input. If I change that to like north, does that start to work? It does. So I think it just can't insert power from the front. I think you have to insert power into one of the sides that has like this uh, little square on it. So basically any side that isn't the front can accept power. And so it's not a problem for any of our other inscribers, just the one at the back there. Anyway, if I put you back on here, that starts to fill up. Obviously we don't have redstone in there, but if I put some redstone in like so, we should start to see our redstone get pulled up into here. And once the processor is made, it should get pulled back down. And so we've done it. We have kind of fully automated the production of these circuits. If we were to put in silicon, redstone, let me get some more silicon here and put that in like this. We can put in printed silicon, we can put in regular silicon, we can put in redstone, we can put in diamonds, gold, and sodas quartz crystals. We can put all of these things in and they will all automatically get turned into the correct item, which is kind of great. It means we don't have to sit here and kind of micromanage it. We can just dump a bunch of stuff in and then slowly but surely over admittedly a rather long time frame, it should transform all of those items into their correct final product. Now, I do wonder if I can like kind of force it to do, that's too fast for me. I was gonna say if I could force it to do some printed silicon here because I would prefer if we got uh, some acceleration cards in here to make the, the making of the final uh, piece just a little bit faster. Obviously, ideally we'd put those acceleration cards 
into everything. But for the time being, we uh, we don't have enough uh, calculation processes for that. That's fine. Uh, so now that this is up and running, we can actually look at starting an Applied Diagnostics 2 system. I know we're quite a ways into the episode here, but let's see if we can't make it happen. So the heart of the uh, Applied Energistics 2 system is the ME controller. This is made with four Fluix crystals, one engineering processor, and then uh, four blocks of Skystone. In this pack, can we get Skystone crafted? There is a Skystone miner, which is interesting. It uh, doesn't seem like there's a very obvious craft. Polished basalt is what we can use. We can enrich polished basalt into Skystone. Interesting. We can also buy it by the looks of it, which I feel like we might as well do. We've got a bunch of tech books. We can make a ton of tech books now with the hellish matter. And so I assumed that it would be down in Oz R Us, but it's not. Where is the uh, the purchase for Skystone? Oh, this has to be done in the shop. Can I craft a shop? I totally can. Nice. I actually didn't know this was a thing. If we uh, throw this down, what can I purchase? I can purchase mushrooms. I can purchase Skystone. I can purchase basic loot boxes. Are these any good? Did that give me nothing? Are these empty? <laughs> Have we been scammed? Okay, so I don't think those give you anything. Those are a great way to um, to delete your tech books if you find that you're carrying around just too much cash to uh, to handle. We could do the Hellish Matter craft here, but it's just so expensive. The Hellish Matter is, uh, is so much more expensive than the other, so I don't know if it's necessarily worthwhile. I will go ahead and buy just a bunch of uh, Skystone, though, and drop that in the system. And with that, we should be able to hopefully craft the ME controller. We might be missing uh, everything because we need to uh, smelt Skystone into Skystone blocks. So let's take four of those and give them a quick smelt over in here. And then we also need to get some more of the Fluix crystals. So we do need to charge some more uh, of these regular Certus Quartz crystals, which apparently we're fully out of. That's fine. We can craft more of them with Nether Quartz. And of course, we are going to need more Redstone and more nether quartz to actually make the flux crystals. And then other than that, we just need one engineering processor, which thankfully we do have over here. Nice. So let's go ahead, grab you, drop in to here. We need uh, four of these. I think we're going to need at least two of these. Let's do you, you, and you. It doesn't matter how many you drop in, it only uses the amount required. Uh, this is one of those situations where it would help if we could stand just a little further away. Fantastic. And once we have at least four of these Fluix crystals, we can make the ME controller. Nice. So now, in order to actually set up a system, we need a few more items because the ME controller is the heart, kind of like the storage network route from simple storage networks. But we need to get a few more things. We need a crafting terminal, one of these guys. This is going to allow us to do a similar thing to what we're doing with our storage request table here. We're also going to need an ME drive this guy right here, and we're going to need probably at least one 1K storage cell. Although I'm not entirely certain if we actually need the drive or the cell, to be honest, because the idea behind the drives and the cells is that you can store items on these digital storage cells, which kind of does away with the need for chests. Alternatively, though, we could just put a bunch of storage interfaces onto these chests to give our Applied Energistics 2 system access, but at the same time, one thing that I've not tried that I'm interested in testing out is this uh, network exchange interface, endpoint of the network for inventory connections. I don't know if this does what I think it does, but the Twitch chat seems to be under the impression that it's going to allow me to connect my Applied Energistics 2 system to my simple storage network system. We can give it a try, though. To make this, we need another storage inventory, which seems easy enough. We also need uh, four stack upgrades, which are pretty straightforward, but do require a fair amount of aluminum dust, which we uh, do not have, but we can get, of course, by dropping a little bit of aluminum into our pulverizers. Over here, let's just do one of these, and I think the aluminum should hopefully just kind of sit in this chest, and by sitting in this chest, I mean get pulled into the system. Nice, cool. So we'll get a stack of aluminum dust that's not gonna be a problem and then the only thing after that is iron nuggets which we totally have so can we make four of these we can indeed and that gets us a network exchange interface so i think if we're going to use the network exchange interface we're also going to need to get a storage bus this thing right here the storage bus allows the applied logistics 2 system to access external inventories so normally uh, it kind of works like the link cable from 
simple storage network where you can put it down and it gives the system access to what is in that inventory like we have on uh, the bottom of our storage drawers and stuff. So in order to make the storage bus here, we are missing the annihilation core and the formation core. These are both made in kind of the same way. They uh, both require some kind of processor. I think they both might require logic processors actually. They require logic processors and then, yeah, it's just charge status quartz and nether quartz. We do need some fluid dust though. And so it's probably going to be in our best interest to do a little bit of automation here potentially with the charger okay so over here we have done a little bit of automation on the charger it's kind of the same setup we have a chest and a laser node and then a charger inside here we've got an extract card and an insert card we filtered this extract card for certus quartz and then over here we have got another insert card another extract card this one isn't filtered on the extract but does seem to only be pulling out the certus quartz uh, the charger is upside down although i don't really think it matters there we go that's the right way up now and yeah we can just drop in certus quartz crystals into the chest which of course we could just make from nether quartz and it slowly but surely transforms them into charged certus quartz Nice. And then we can take that charged shutter quartz along with, you guessed it, yet more nether quartz and yet more redstone. And now we can make kind of bulk amounts of the, um, the Fluix crystals, which are just going to make it easier for us to progress forward here. So let's grab, hopefully, all of those crystals. Fantastic. And then we do need some of them in dust form. Let's throw, say, half of them uh, into a pulverizer. No, we have to do it in the crusher. Interesting. I don't believe, oh, never mind, we totally did make a crusher. I was going to say, I don't think we made a crusher, but we definitely did. That is fine. Let me steal these speed upgrades and uh, whack them into here. And then if we throw in half of the fluid crystals, we can then give that a quick tap, like so. And because we've got a ton of power, it's not really a problem. We can very quickly get 18 fluid dust back over here. We can now make those annihilation cores and those formation cores for the storage bus. So the annihilation core is easy enough and the formation core is also easy enough we just need a certus quartz crystal i should probably just craft a bunch of those and dump them in the system so we have them ready to use in the future and boom fantastic all right that gets us a emmy interface like so which can then be crafted into a storage bus so i'm hoping that we can put the storage bus onto the network exchange interface to give our A2 system, controlled by the controller, access to all of the items that our simple storage network has access to. Whether or not that's going to work is kind of TBD, but in order to test if it works, we're going to need the ME crafting terminal. For that, we need a crafting table, a calculation processor, and an ME terminal. The ME terminal requires an illumination panel, which is made with quartz glass, glowstone, redstone, and iron. Quartz glass seems easy enough. We do need certus quartz, though. Certus quartz dust specifically. And that certus quartz dust is made again in the crusher. Thankfully though, this time we can just use regular Certus Quartz crystals. They don't have to be charged at all. And so let's just once again do a quick one of these to make that nice and fast. And then back over here, let's do one of these to get some quartz glass, which we can then craft into an illumination panel, which we can then craft into an ME terminal using those other annihilation and formation cores, and then into a crafting terminal. We just need a crafting table, and hopefully one calculation processor from over here. We do not have any calculation processors over here, and that's because we don't have enough silicon over here either, which is kind of to be expected. We are going to need a lot of silicon. Let me get just a ton of nether quartz, and let's really start smelting this stuff up. Let's also move all of these back around. And along with that, we can also, of course, continue to use our time in a bottle here to make that even quicker. Uh, the Twitch chat did point out that we might be able to kind of force the printed calculation circuits to go next if we put them at the front of the chest. So it seems like it takes from left to right, and so putting those in does push them to the front of the pack. And thankfully, we do only need one of them in order to be able to make our ME crafting terminal. Like this. Nice. Now that we have this, let's go see if we can make this work. We are going to need... A, another flux point, I believe, in order to power our controller. Thankfully, we do have everything to make that happen. Fantastic. And I'm probably going to put the controller somewhere over here just to make our lives a little bit easier. So the first thing we need to do is, is kind of figure out if this actually works. And what I mean by that is if we can actually use the network interface, the exchange interface, to, uh, to connect to our A2 system. So if I put this here, that is available. If I put an ME storage bus on that, and then for now, I'm just going to throw the controller down, let's say, here. And we're going to put the ME crafting interface onto that in just a second. The cable that you need to use for 
Applied Energistics, oh, we're getting a little bit of server lag. The uh, cable that you need to use for Applied Energistics 2 is called Fluix Cable. It is this stuff right here, and it's made with Fluix Crystals and Quartz Fiber. Quartz Fiber, more glass, and more of that Certus Quartz Dust. Thankfully, Isaac of the Past did process a lot of Certus Quartz Dust, and so we should be able to make quite a bit of this Quartz Fiber, and by extension, quite a bit of the Fluix Cable here. Thankfully for right now, we don't need that many cables. Okay, so it turns out that the network exchange interface is too laggy. Like, it doesn't work. This was what was... I'll show you real quick. Uh, here on the server, we have currently got a TPS of 20, so it's 20 ticks per second, which is what you expect. That's what Minecraft runs at. As soon as I put this down and we do the same command, the, uh, the TPS was a second ago down at 3, which is, um, is not particularly good. Um, it seems to be working okay for the moment, I wonder if it's because I put the bus on there. You'll see it's dropping 19.6, 15.3, 12.7, 10.8, and it kind of keeps going down from here. So I'm just going to get rid of this. This seems like it's not going to work, which is unfortunate because it might have actually worked. Let me quickly see though. If I put this here, uh, and then we can put the flux point down here. So the flux point is going to give power to the A2 system. We should see this start to uh, light up. Fantastic. And then this is our uh, crafting terminal. I'm going to make this um, a little bit bigger. There we go. And uh, so just like with this, you can craft and you can pull items out. It's all good. But uh, I was hoping we could just put the ME storage bus onto the network exchange interface. It's possible that we might be able to do this and put the storage bus onto the network route. I'm less convinced that that's going to work. Yeah, I don't think that does work, unfortunately. What I will do, just to see if it would have worked, is I'm going to temporarily throw this ME storage bus onto the network exchange interface like this and just see if that works how I think it does. It totally does. And so it, it, it sucks <laughs> that that doesn't work. It sucks that it's so laggy. Uh, I do want to order by number of items and then... Uh, descending from most to least so this does connect the system up nicely and does show us all of the items that we have available to us the trouble is that in doing so it also just nukes the server from orbit which is not great it's quite bad <laughs> and so that's not really going to work for us unfortunately now the good news is is that we can kind of get around that i think fairly easily Right now, I'm going to keep the simple storage network around because we're already using it so much. I don't really want to go through, like we, we could replace it. Uh, Applied Energistics 2 does have, you know, exporters. It does have importers. You can make these export buses and import buses. And so we could do the same thing we've been doing with simple storage network, but with Applied Energistics. But that seems like an awful lot of work for a very small amount of payoff. And so I think we're not going to do that. Instead, what I think we'll do is I think we can keep this here Right now, though, my thought process is that we're using the Simple Storage Network to export items. I think almost all of the items that we're exporting are in storage drawers, right? Glowstone could be an exception to that rule. Do we have a storage drawer for Glowstone? We don't. Basically, though, what I'm thinking is if we move all of the things that our Simple Storage Network needs to the storage drawers, we can put an external storage on the storage drawer controller, which is down here, right? So if we just do something like this and put down the ME storage bus there. We can then connect both the simple storage network and the AE2 system to the draw controller. If we come back up here, we can just run this cable up and around to the controller like so. And now in here, we should see everything that's in our storage drawers. The only thing we can't currently see in our applied Energistics 2 system is the stuff inside of our chests. Now, the good news here is that we can kind of get rid of these chests by investing in that ME drive that we saw earlier. We just need to get two more engineering processes, which we do have. Fantastic. And then from there, we need to make a couple of ME storage cells, which mostly require logic processes, so does quartz and redstone. So let's grab just a bunch of logic processes as well. Chat is right, the glowstone miner is downstairs. That's where our stuff is currently. That's fine though. We could always import the glowstone if we needed access to it via the A2 system. And so let's quickly see about making the ME drive. Fantastic. Let's put you down for now, right about here. And then let's make a storage cell. So there are multiple tiers of storage cell. They start at 1K, move up to 4K, 16K, 64K, and 256K. 
These do work in a little bit of a different way though to the refined storage storage disks. With refined storage, let me bookmark these, you have different tiers of storage cell, but they just hold different numbers of items. So in refined storage, the 1K storage cell, which is this guy right here, uh, holds just 1,000 items. So it's pretty straightforward the way that the storage disks work in refined storage. 1,000 items, 4,000 items, 16,000 items, etc. The Applied Energy 6 2 disks are a little bit more complex. They can hold up to 1,000 items on the 1K disk, but it can only hold a maximum of 63 different types of items. And so what that means is that in here, we currently have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You, you get the idea. Each different item is a different type of item. So these five stacks of cobblestone all count as one type, but if you add the nether bricks into the mix, these all also count as one type, but these two together count as two types. And so if you have a lot of one specific item, so if we were, if we just had like 65,000 cobblestone, we could probably fit all of that into one 64K disc. However, if we had 65,000 individual different items, we would be better off making a ton of these 1K discs, if that makes sense. And so for us, for now, the 1K disc is not particularly great because it only holds a thousand bytes. But then again, I don't think we have a, an awful lot of any one item. Like in these chests, I don't think we have more than a thousand of any one given item. And so I think we are probably going to be best suited just making a bunch of 1K drives here. Uh, now, it's going to be easier for the moment for us to do this in here. So let's do something like this. Let's make a couple of these 1K drives. You can fit up to eight, I believe, into here. Never mind, you can fit 10 in there as well. Let's do uh, two more of these. Fantastic. And then from there, we should be able to make, I think, just 10 1K drives. We might not have enough quartz glass currently, but we can make yet more quartz glass because we have a lot of surface quartz dust. And so let's do something like this and like this. And then we can put all of these into here. And the idea now is that we can use these discs as our chests. So if we were to start just putting items into the terminal here, those items are going to start filling up these storage cells. And you'll see that just from what I had in my inventory, we have managed to use 15 out of 63 types. And so if we start grabbing all of the stuff here and just dumping it all into the system, it's going to start putting them into these drives. That does mean that the simple storage network is not going to have access to them anymore. But I think that's fine because we're going to stop using the storage request table for crafting. We're going to focus on using Applied Energistics 2 for crafting. We're only going to use the simple storage network to move around items that it's kind of already moving around. So things like whatever's being exported over here, like exporting coal, exporting iron, exporting, you know, gold, all of the stuff that's currently being exported to keep our system going. And so let me quickly just move everything out of these chests into our system. And then we'll look next, I think, at setting up a wireless crafting terminal, which is going to allow us to access everything inside of this terminal. Also, let me quickly see if I can't turn JEI auto sort off, which I think is in here. I want to turn off sync with JEI. It's just a personal preference of mine. But uh, we are going to go ahead and look at crafting the wireless crafting terminal, which is going to allow us to basically use this, but anywhere in the base. All right, and now that all of our chests are empty, we can look at getting this wireless crafting terminal. Before we do, it turns out that my information was incorrect, actually, on how the 1K drives work. I was under the impression that a thousand bytes meant a thousand items. It turns out that's not the case. Each item is kind of equivalent to one bit, and in computer terms, eight bits equals one byte. And the same is true here, actually. So you'll see here that we have got 642 out of 1,024 bytes used, and you'll see in that drive we have 233 of these seeds. If I take one seed out, the number stays the same. It's still 642. I have to take eight seeds out, for that number to change. You'll see now it's at 641 instead of 642, and if I put all eight of these in, it goes from 641 back up to 642, which actually makes these 1K drives way better than I thought they were because they can effectively hold up to 8,000 items, albeit still of only 63 types. You'll see here that we have filled up the types section of this drive a lot faster than we filled up the bytes. We've got space for more seeds, but we don't have space for another rogue item, like another steel casing or something, if that makes sense. Either way, um, we've got all of our stuff in here and we do still have a ton of space in the drives here. And so it's not really something we're gonna have to worry about. And so now looking at this wireless crafting terminal, I don't think this is gonna be too 
difficult for us to make. We need another ME crafting terminal, which is not too bad. We need a dense energy cell, which might be the most expensive part here. This requires eight energy cells and a calculation processor. The energy cells though don't really look too difficult, although we are going to need, um, I think some more flux dust, but also by the looks of it, some more quartz glass. Can I make, I was gonna say a stack of that, apparently the answer is no. Let me quickly take the uh, Certus Quartz here and get that in the crusher. Let's also grab however many, uh, also I should have my uh, time in a bottle on me, but uh, let's also grab whatever is fully cooked in here. I think redstone is what we need to, uh, to throw in there now. And of course, thankfully redstone is still accessible in here. Again, soon we won't need these once we have the wireless terminal, we should be pretty much good to go on, uh, on kind of getting rid of these storage request tables that are dotted out and about. But for now, we do still kind of rely on them. And we could also, for now, do with our time in a bottle as well, which I have uh, temporarily at least thrown back into the system, uh, which is not where it wants to be. And once we have some more Surtis Quartz dust, we can once again make some more Quartz glass. And let's see how many of these we can actually make. I am, yeah, I figured we were going to be out of uh, Flux dust. That is fine because Nether Quartz we have, Redstone we have, and we should have uh, well over a stack, if not a few stacks, of charged soda spots over here now. And so, unlike before, we could now hopefully just do boom, 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 and get us two stacks of Fluix crystals. And I guess for now, we'll just go ahead and take like one of those stacks and throw it into the crusher. And we do have almost nine hours of time in here, so I'm not really too bothered about using a lot of it making the crusher faster. We could again steal the speed upgrades. We should probably make sure there are speed upgrades in here because that just makes it that bit more efficient. But uh, for the time being, this is gonna do the job just fine. And that should be all that we need, I think, in terms of getting the remaining four energy cells. And then so long as we have a calculation processor, which we do, we can make the dense energy cell like so. And then now we need a wireless receiver, which requires a Fluix pearl, which does require an ender pearl, which we currently cannot make because we do not have enough ender ore, but that is fine. We are making ender ore over here. Let's do a quick one of these and a quick one of these. Uh, the Osmium did make its way in there. I think that's from a, a previous endeavor though. Uh, I do still want to make this faster, of course, to uh, kind of start to tear through that backlog a little bit. But uh, back over here, we should see ender pearls. Okay, so we're not going to see ender pearls just yet. And that's because of the fact that the simple storage network is what is being used to import from those chests and so for now those are going to go into here we do need to fix that we could probably do with swapping out the importers here and here with import buses from applied energistics because the applied energistics system can still put stuff in storage drawers which is what we're after for now though let's take that ender pearl let's craft it up into a flux pearl and then let's craft that flux pearl into a wireless receiver fantastic and then let's just get one more wireless access terminal, although I think we can probably take the one we already have and use that. The only other thing we need is a wireless access point, which is this guy right here. The wireless access point seems pretty straightforward. Not quite sure why I didn't put the crafting recipes in the right slots there, but the uh, wireless access point goes down onto network cable like so, and it gives you the range. So if I were to grab, and uh, we do need to real quick actually make another one of these flux pearls and therefore another one of these wireless receivers. And we also need that uh, dense energy cell that we made a second ago. Fantastic, let's take that along with the screen here. And basically in here, we can do the recipe for this guy, which is you, you, and you. And so now this is unlinked. I think annoyingly to link it, we need a security terminal, which I should have thought about ahead of time because now we actually do need to get another screen because I can't access the stuff that's in my system without the screen. And so real quick, let's see if we can't get another ME crafting terminal here. This might be tricky given that I can't access my ME drives like a complete fool. And a little bit later, we've made another crafting terminal. There we go. Uh, again, I'm hopefully not going to be using this for much longer. Let's once again set that to a uh, number of items and descending. Perfect. But uh, yeah, we do need to get a uh, security terminal in order to link the wireless crafting terminal to our pre-existing setup. For that, we need an ME terminal, which now we can just make. Fantastic. And we need to make an ME chest, which seems easy enough. We also need to get the hard part, which is a 16K ME storage drive. So for that, we need three 4K storage components, and each one of those requires three 1k storage components. So we need nine 1k storage components, which should be fine actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Perfect, that lets us craft up, hopefully, uh, three of these. We should have a bunch of processes available over in here. We do indeed, good stuff. Let's put those back into the system to hopefully allow us to craft up one, two, three of those. And with three of those, we should be able to craft one of the 16K variants. And from there, we should be able to craft the security terminal, which again, for now, we'll put down right about here. And if we put the wireless uh, crafting grid in here, that now links it to this AE2 system. And now the final piece of the puzzle is to actually charge this item. And that is where it's probably gonna be in our best interest to invest in this guy, the Flux controller from Flux Networks. This is a super nifty block because as you can see here, it enables wireless charging on your Flux network, which is going to allow us to charge this crafting table wirelessly. So in order to do that, I do want to actually real quick, before I do that, I think I might be able to charge this item like in the reactor, if I put it here. Never mind, I can't put the item in there, right? I really thought that was gonna work. Um, I, I'm almost certain that you can charge it by putting it in the charger, which is wild. And also it helps if you don't have the extract card extracting your item instantly. But I think, I think this does charge, although very, very slowly, you'll see it's 1% charged at the top there. So that's gonna take way too long. Let me put that uh, extract card back in there. So yeah, let's get the, um, the, the wireless crafting from Flux Networks going. For that, we're going to need quite a few things. Specifically, we're going to need a few more of those uh, ender pearl fragments. Uh, if I do it in here, this system should have access to them, but I guess we just don't have that many of them. Let me go and put a few more stacks of ender ore into a pulverizer here. And let's also give that pulverizer a little bit of a tap to make it hopefully just that little bit faster. And some more ender fragments later. Let's take all of those. And I assume we still have some blaze paddle left. We do indeed, fantastic. So back, whoops, that's not what I want to do at all. Back in here, we should now be able to hopefully make this happen. So we need five flux blocks. Let's first start by making a bunch of flux dust because we can make really as much of that as we like. And then from there, let's make, I think really just as many eye of enders as we can because I'm also fairly certain we don't need them in enderpearl form for anything. Then let's make a bunch of flux cores. And then from there, can we make one, two, three, four, five of these? We totally can. And I think that that gets us the flux controller. Nice. So we'll put this down potentially just behind the reactor here. So like right about there. That seems fine. In here, we're gonna set this to our lappy power setup. And then at the top, there's a wireless charging tab. We want to wirelessly charge everything apart from the main inventory. So we're just gonna click armor slots, curio slots, hotbar, offhand, main hand, and enable wireless. Apply. At which point, we should see, look at that, the wireless crafting terminal got charged because this is now charging items in our hotbar wirelessly. And now, if we go back over here and we right click with our wireless crafting terminal, we can see that we have access to all of the items in all of our disks and all the items in our storage drawers wirelessly. Again, we want to set this to sort by number of items descending. I also want to change the terminal style to, I guess, full height, <laughs> which is not particularly big, but is gonna have to do. And now we can do any crafting we would normally do, but inside of this wireless terminal. The only downside is that it is currently range limited, as we can see in here, to 16 meters. So if we go a little further away, we should be fine. But if we go a lot further away, we lose access to that wireless range. So there are a few things we can do here. The first is we can put in boosters to increase the range. So there's a wireless booster. There is also an infinity range booster, but it requires a nether star that we currently don't have access to. So we're gonna have to go for now with the regular old wireless boosters. For these, the only thing we're missing is ender dust, which I believe is just pulverized ender pearls. And so once again, if we uh, quickly do something like this and uh, drop those into here with a quick tip, we should be able to get a few more ender pearls and we should be able to use those ender pearls to make a couple of wireless boosters, which should hopefully give us enough range to access our wireless crafting terminal kind of anywhere within our current base. And a bunch of end fragments later, we now have more ender pearls, which we can then put back into the pulverizer like so uh, to create some of that ender dust, which we can then use to make these range boosters. So back over here, let's do this. And how much does this increase our range by? It is gonna increase the power usage. Right now it's eight AE per tick, which I think is also eight RF per tick. One, oh, so they're exponential by the looks of it. So the first one only increased our range by one meter, but the second one increased it by 1.8. The third one increased it by even more. And it looks like the more of these we add, the further our range gets. 
This is 57 meters, which is already pretty far. I don't think that's going to quite get us all the way over. By the way, one meter is one block, so that's essentially 57 blocks. That's not quite full base access. We could, of course, move the uh, wireless access point. And by the way, none of this is staying here. This is just to, uh, to show the proof of concept. We're going to move all of this uh, in just a second. But... Um, Given that it's not that expensive to make these and it's not that expensive to run these, I feel like we might as well grab a few more here and just kind of fill them up. I assume that 64 is maybe the max you can do, but with this 92.3 meters, I think we might have near full base access. Yeah, we can go quite far out. So around here, here is the furthest we can go, which I think is fine. That should mean that no matter where we are in the base currently, we can access our applied Energistics 2 system, and the whole thing currently only uses 48.58 redstone flux per tick, and we're producing like 60 plus thousand with the capability of producing up to 100,000 if we do put some dry ice into that reactor. But yeah, this works surprisingly well. I don't know if with applied Energistics, you can open the terminal with a keybind. There is a keybind here for open wireless terminal. If I set that to Z, I think by default Z is set to toggle all waypoints. Let's turn that off. Can I? Oh, I totally can. Look at that. So this has a curio slot, which means we can put it in here in our head slot. And now if I press Z, it just opens up the terminal. So I don't even have to have the terminal in my hotbar. I just have to have it in my curio slot. And because over in here, we did click on the button that allows us to wirelessly charge our curio slot. That's going to stay wirelessly charged all the time. And all we have to do is just press Z wherever we are, and it will automatically open up that wireless crafting grid. And we can just grab whatever item it is we want. If we needed some redstone, we could just grab it and do whatever we want to do. We could put the redstone back and we can do any crafting we like. And so it's kind of like having the storage request tables, but just anywhere. We don't have to worry about where we are in the base. It should just work. And so now there are a few little things that we need to fix before we're kind of fully good for the swap to A2. The first thing we need to fix is kind of putting some imports buses onto these chests. Because again, right now it's being pulled in using simple storage network, which means that some things end up in these chests, like these here, which is not ideal. I don't want anything ending up in these chests. In fact, I kind of want to just get rid of those chests entirely. I do want to come down here and make sure that the priority on this storage bus is set to high. In this case, higher priority goes first. That's the opposite to how it works with the simple storage network. I'll set this to a thousand. And so again, just like with the simple storage network, now the A2 system should try and put stuff in the storage drawer controller before it puts stuff into its disk drive. Chat is actually right here in that what we could do is we could unlock ender chests. If we get eight tech books, which we can probably get from our system, Never mind. apparently we don't have any tech books lying around, that is fine, let's make 10 of them. Again, slight problem with the system not having access to things like bronze, I am going to get to that in just a second though, because I have a plan to rectify that. Let's do this and this, let's purchase this, and then we also do need to hand in the research paper for ender chests. That seems pretty straightforward though, we just need four ender pearls, four ultimate tech name and a blank research paper, easy peasy, and boom. With that, what we should be able to do is actually make these ender chests from the ender storage mod, which are going to be pretty useful for us. We do need blaze rods for that. And the blaze rods, of course, require blaze powder. The blaze powder is made from these uh, flux coils. So let's make maybe a few more stacks of those and kind of go through the same rigmarole we've done before here, where we kind of just drop these in, pulverize them into blaze powder, and then, of course, utilize the uh, metal press over the head to transform them back into... Gosh, we've got so much stuff. We don't really need to worry about keeping this, though. We have so much ore that throwing a little bit away is gonna be fine but uh, yeah we'll run that through the metal press to get the blaze rods and the idea here is that we can use these ender chests in place of these chests here and here and then we can make a third ender chest that we put closer to our a2 system and then we can just put an import bus onto that third ender chest and that should allow the a2 system to pull everything in without having to run a super long cable over to those pre-existing chests. Because what we could do is we could get a ton more of this uh, flux cable, run it all the way along under the platform up to those chests and just put import buses on those. But the ender chests are gonna make that just so much faster. And I keep forgetting that there are too many ores <laughs> in the way. But uh, real quick, let's get enough blaze rods to make all of those chests. And then let's see if we can't make this work. 
All right, so 12 blaze rods later, we should now be able to make, I believe, uh, three ender chests here. These are pretty cool in that you can specify like a frequency. So you can have multiple different ender chests that kind of connect to each other. So uh, by default, they're all set to uh, white, 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 which is what we want. And uh, if we put one down, let's say here, we can then put our import bus on that ender chest and then connect that up using the Fluix cable that we have here, like that. And so now anything that gets put in this chest should be brought in. Now you'll see that somebody else has already put a chest down on the server, and uh, that's why I have these diamonds here. So if you right click on the nose with the diamond, that links the ender chest to you. You'll see it says gaming on caffeine in the top right there. Whereas without it, anybody on the server can also access that chest if it's set to the same frequency. So somebody else had obsidian in there. I'll put it back in. I don't mind. I don't need their obsidian. But um, what you can also do is you can change the frequency using dyes. And so if I were to, for example, get some lapis like this, I could make a dedicated frequency that was white, blue, white, like this. And now if I open, uh, if I do this to link this, this chest is mine and is white, 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 but it's not linked to this chest. So if I put uh, some lab redstone ore in here, it's not available in here. However, if I make this the same frequency, now that redstone ore is in both of these and the import bus has gonna have pulled that directly into the system. And so the idea here is that we can take this diamond chest, which we could probably pick up with the carry-on mod, potentially. If we use this in place of our import chest here, so if we move this out of the way and we put down the ender chest, that should kind of still work. We're gonna get rid of that import cable on the bottom. That is no longer necessary. We'll put all this stuff away for now. And what should happen is all of the items go to the ender chest. And then over on the other side here, this importer should pull all the items from this chest into the system. Now, just like before, we could do with some acceleration cards to make it just that little bit faster, because right now it is not fast enough. Thankfully, now we do have the Fluix crystals, and so making the acceleration cards is easy enough. But if we do this, you'll see it's going to move those out substantially faster, and it's going to send them to where they need to go. And it's also going to put items that don't have a storage drawer into the disk drive, making them accessible by the A2 system. And so now the next problem that we kind of have is this one right here, because this one has the intermediary of the uh, nickel dust and the iron dust. I think, I don't know if you can filter with the import bus here. Um, I think you can. I think it's a separate upgrade though. Uh, if I type in filter, it might be called something different. Applied energistics. I think in the same way that you can make the speed cards, I feel like there's also a filter card. So the way that you filter with the import bus, you can right click on it and then you can put items in like this. And so now this will only filter, it will only import diamonds, right? And so I put diamonds in here, they get sucked up, but everything else stays where it is. We want to do the opposite of that though. We want to blacklist what we don't want to be filtered. I'm wondering if that's where the inverter card here comes into play. The inverter card, I would assume, it says it can go inside the import bus. I would assume that inverts the filter. Let's give it a try, redstone torch. And then, oops, it keeps moving the stuff. We also need another set of advanced cards. That's also easy enough. If I take the inverter card and I put that in here, that's still pulling items in. So I assume then that if I take a diamond and I put that in here and I put the diamond in, now it's importing everything apart from diamonds. Nice. Okay, cool. This is good. And so there are two things we're going to have to do in that case then. We're going to have to swap the acceleration card for an inverter card and somewhat annoyingly, we're also going to have to swap another one of those acceleration cards for an expansion card, which is one of these cards over here. Sorry, not an expansion card, a capacity card, I think is what we're after. The capacity card here, I believe, is going to increase the number of filter slots, because you'll see right now we can only access one of them. If I do this, it gives us access to filter more, which I think should be fine. You'll see here it's still pulling things in fast enough. All we want to do is we want to blacklist the importing of iron dust and nickel dust and maybe one other dust let me check on my filter down here we want to white blacklist all of this so uh osmium dust i think is what this is that doesn't matter anymore because we're not processing osmium here but uh, copper dust nickel dust iron dust and crystals so do i have any copper dust i don't do i have any crystals i also don't okay fine um do we uh there is one in here. I will, I was gonna take that, there we go. And then copper dust is something that we're not getting a ton of. But if we quickly steal a copper ore, 
we should be able to pulverize that directly into a copper dust to get what we're after. So if I do... Well, if I can find an empty chest. Right now, this is not important, which is uh, kind of the problem. All of this stuff should be going over to here. But then, of course, right now, that would be getting imported. So over here, let me quickly start adding stuff to the denial list. So we've got the inverter on there. Let's not do iron dust. Let's not do nickel dust. We do want to import diamonds. Uh, we don't want to import crystalline. And then all we need to do after that is add the copper dust to that as well. So now we should be able to swap out this chest here for yet another ender chest. So I'll put you down. We'll grab one more lapis so we can make one more blue die, like so. Whack you in the middle. Make sure, of course, there is a diamond on the front, like that, on the little nose. Um, unfortunately, the carry-on mod doesn't seem to work with this ender chest. That is unfortunate. But if we do break it and move it over to here, we can get rid of this again, and we can do something like this. Nice. And so that is working, and you'll see that the um, the iron dust is staying here, which is actually kind of perfect. Now we don't really need the extraction cards here. We do have extraction cards that pull items here and send them over to here. Not really necessary, because these chests are now both linked, and now uh, the stuff that's in here will still get pulled out and sent where it needs to go. So the system should still work as intended, um, so long as these are not empty. But these are all full, obviously, which is a problem. And so next time, chat, the plan is going to be to look at utilizing automation with applied energistics. Because the whole reason we did any of this, right now we've not really done much outside of make a slightly different simple storage network, right? We've kind of just replaced our pre-existing system with a new one. The only benefit that we've got so far is the wireless crafting, which is good, but obviously uh, probably not worth all the effort if that was all that we were going to get. The benefit now, though, of applied energistics is its sophisticated auto crafting. We're going to look at getting some molecular assemblers. We're going to look at getting some ME interfaces, and we're going to look at automating certain crafts so that we can just say, hey, I want this many of this item and it's going to make them for us as opposed to us having to manually craft a bunch of smaller items again and again and again and again and so next time we'll come back we'll look at teaching our system how to make the higher tier of integral components and the flux linkage amplifiers we'll look at making all of these machines faster so we can start uh, working through the uh, backlog of resources that we still seem to be getting and uh, hopefully we can also look at automating some of the other items required for the final technium and once we've got autocraft up and running we can then start looking at the uh, space stuff here and of course moving on to that final tech but those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.